Hi everybody, I'm Buck WSR Weezer, putting the do and the do-it-yourself, as I say in all my videos. <clears throat> and today I'm sitting out here uh, at my RV, and I'm getting ready to drain the waste tanks. And this video is really, I, I got something new recently that I wanted to show you, but this video is really a follow-up to a video that I did a couple of years ago on how to connect your RV to home sewer. So I'll put a link if you haven't checked that video out, but the video was viewed by a lot of people and it also engendered a lot of interesting discussion, some of which was very polarizing, with some strong opinions being expressed. And I just wanted to answer some questions uh, before I show you the DIY part of this video. I wanted to talk to you about this whole thing of connecting your RV to home sewer. Now this three inch PVC pipe that you see beside me is where I connect my RV and drain my tanks, how I connect it to my home sewer. And I wanna show you something about that. But the comments were very polarizing from, wow, that's the greatest thing ever. Thanks for showing us, I wanna do this too. To the opposite end, oh, that's so illegal. Your neighbors aren't gonna put up with that. You can't get away with it. That's a code violation. You're going to jail. Well, nobody actually said I would go to jail, but the opinions were pretty strong and pretty fierce. So I wanted to address some of those questions before I show you the, the, the how-to part of today's video. First of all, what about my neighbors? Well, I have an acre and a half, so I'm not that close to my neighbors. And the neighbors that I do have are are great people. We have great relationships with our neighbors. Not one of them care about my RV and uh, we just get along really well. In fact, where I'm sitting right now between my RV and the pipe to which I drain my tanks, there's no real view of that for any of my neighbors because the RV is right here. Um, so I don't know that my neighbors have ever even seen this, plus the fact that I run it along the inside of a fence so it's out of sight to most people. Never had any problems with the neighbors. Maybe where you live, that's not as uh, good of a possibility, or maybe your neighbors are busybodies and uh, aren't as nice as the neighbors that we have, but that's never been an issue. But what about the legality of a setup like this? Is this legal? That's a yes or no question, but I can't answer it with a yes or a no. I'll answer it with three, three words. I don't know. And I'm not going to look into it or make a phone call down to the construction office or to the, or to the municipality to find out their view on it. Well, that's because you know it's not legal and they'll tell you to get rid of that. Well, maybe they would, and perhaps I'm just choosing to be blissfully ignorant. Guess I'm not going to to, to deny that. But yes or no is not a good enough answer. So let me think with you about some of my <clears throat> some of my thoughts here. And I'm tired of kneeling, so let me just sit down for a little bit. Here's a couple of my thoughts regarding the legality of this. One, one of my thoughts has to do with this. I am, our, our, my RV is connected in terms of utilities to my house. I get electric by connecting to my house, electricity, shore power. And uh, all of that electricity comes to me from the power company through a meter, so I pay for it. So whether I'm using the electricity in my house or in my RV, I'm paying for it legally. The same with the water. I'm connected to my home water supply, which is from the local municipality. And I, so whether I'm using the water in the RV or in my garden or in my house, I'm paying for it because it all comes through a meter and I am billed accordingly. I also am connected to, to uh, public sewer. And based on the amount of water that I use, a calculation is made for how much I pay to, for, the, for the sewer bill. So whether I am showering in my RV and it's going into the sewer or whether I'm showering in my house, I'm still paying for the water that comes in and for the waste that goes out. So whether I have a guest using the toilet in my house or a guest using the toilet in my RV, I'm, I'm paying, paying for that either way 
uh, in a legal fashion. So I'm not trying to pull a fast one, steal electricity or water or sewer service. I'm paying for all of it that, uh, that comes in and goes out. Um, so I think about it that, that way. Um, and I don't feel that doing that is, is anything illegal. Yes, but it's not up to code. All right, perhaps, perhaps it's not up to code. But here's how, here's, you know, maybe, maybe a permanent system like this run above ground beside your RV uh, is, is some kind of code violation. I'm willing to grant that. But a couple of things to think about. In the event that I were to sell this property or get rid of my RV or be visited by an inspector who said that's not up to code, within 15 to 30 minutes, because this is run entirely above ground, I, I can have the whole thing uninstalled and carried off to the trash within 15 or 30 minutes and there's no longer any code violation. So I view it more as a temporary thing as opposed to an ongoing and permanent inappropriate installation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Maybe that feels to you just like a irrationalization, but for for me, uh, I feel okay about it. You know, another thing I think it's important to is to, to differentiate between criminal activity and a temporary building code violation. They're not the same thing. You know, to to drive under the influence of alcohol, putting your life and the lives of others at danger, that, that's criminal. Connecting your RV to home sewer is not criminal, even if there is a temporary code violation that's part of it. So we probably don't want to lump every possible offense into one category. It's, 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 a, it's a different kind of thing. You following what I'm saying? So maybe based on what I've said, you have some additional thoughts. Probably some of you will continue to violently disagree with me and decry the illegality of and inappropriateness of this setup. All right, well, you're entitled to that opinion, and actually, I'd like to hear it. So with that said, another question that I get on that video is, but specifically, okay, so you've got the 3-inch PVC. How do you connect that to your RV? And I wanted to show you, and this is more of the how-to side of this video today. I wanted to show you how I do that because I recently picked up a product that makes it really easy for me to do that. Now, previously what I did is I simply had the, so I've got the three inch pipe. I may have bring you in a little bit closer. So I have this three inch pipe here with the, with the, the female adapter connector on the end and uh, a screw in cover. Well, I, I just connected, I just had a, a fitting like this that would I slide in there and I'd put a set screw in the top to sort of hold it in place, but it never worked really well. And while draining the tanks, I continued to leak a little bit here. So I recently came up with another system that I am very excited about trying today for the first time with you. And I got this right here at the local camping world, this Valterra Rigid Pipe Adapter. And what's cool about it is it's got this end that swivels that connects to the normal RV uh, drain hookup style and then a threaded end here that will thread right in to my 3 inch PVC adapter. I like that. So I thread that in like so and uh, then I've got my, my hose here and on this end I put the, the connector to, uh, that meets up with this guy. And that was another fitting that I got at the, uh, at the camping world. What do they call this way? Rotating bayonet fitting. So that's on the end of my traditional uh, RV drain line and we should be able to clip this together like so. I'd use this piece of PVC or half inch, uh, this, this half pipe to sort of hold this up, which I probably don't need as much now with this new fitting, but I just wire it up like that and kind of give some stability. So I got then this end that connects 
to my RV. Now I want to show you this a little bit closer here. So I, he, I have to open up this hatch to access the drains. This is not the this is not the RV that I had originally when I put in this system. Um, the other RV when I made that other video was our '92 Rexall Airx, and it had the drain components underneath the RV, so I didn't have to open a compartment to access them. But here I do, and. So I don't leave this permanently connected. I just, when I need to drain the tanks, I open it up, connect them, and take a couple of minutes to do that. So it's not connected there uh, permanently. So let me uh, pull you back here. So I'm gonna then go ahead and connect here. And one of the issues that I, that I have not really resolved too well is how the pipe sort of just hangs there and the weight of the water and waste sort of weighs it down. So I really need to get some kind of board to span between here and there just to hold the pipe up. Otherwise I just got to sit here and hold it up while it drains, which is no big deal. Now this RV, so we connect up there and I've got a hole down here through which I could, you know, run this line problem there is it would come out at a spot that's lower than the connection point on the PVC pipe and we all know that the refuse doesn't run uphill so that's never worked out too good for me but let's try out this new connector and you're joining me trying it out here for the very first time <clears throat> But I will sit here and just kind of support this as the as the tanks drain, which isn't that much fun. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So you might be able to hear the the waste draining now. And uh, happily, I got a nice dry, non-leaking connection there. As the refuse goes to the place to which it is destined. So always drain the black tank first, that's the toilet waste, and then after that I, I drain the gray water, uh, the sink and shower waste. And this works really, this is a really convenient uh, setup for me. Yeah, so that's it. Like those new components, they seem to be working pretty good. Well, I'm sure there's no real excitement in watching me uh, sit here and drain the tanks. So let me sign off here. I want to thank you for watching the video. Uh, you might have some feelings one way or the other about what we discussed, and I'd be happy to hear them. Uh, so, yeah, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. Please uh, subscribe to my channel for more RV-related and other DIY do-it-yourself projects because together we're putting the do into do-it-yourself. All right? I'll see you later. Bye-bye.